All right, good evening everyone and welcome back to my YouTube reviews. I am Devin Dunnigan and today I'm reviewing Kiss's third album, Dress to Kill, released on March 18th, 1975, produced by Neil Bogart and um, released on Casablanca Records, recorded at Electric Ladyland Studios. And um, the reason it was produced by Neil Bogart is because of the shortness of money within Casablanca Records. Um, this album be, would be the final Kiss album before they would kind of really hit for the live. And um, yeah, let's um, jump into the track listing. Um, first track, Room Service, Quintessential uh, uh. Classic Kiss. Um, love it, always have. Um, there's a live version on You Wanted the Best, You've Got the Best from 1996, which. Um, Thanks a re-recorded version of the song because um, the instruments and vocals sound like they're from 1996. Um, as with the second track, Two Time, I love the track. Always have. Um, it was also featured as a live version on You Wanted the Best, You Got the Best. They were quote-unquote from the vault, but I, I they were touched up in 1996. And um, the third track, Ladies in Waiting, this was actually um, performed um, a few times on the um, a live tour in 76. Um, one of the Detroit shows, I believe the Detroit, uh, I believe this, um, it, I can't remember what, what the date was on it. But um, it was performed during that show, or one of the shows, and um, they, it replaced Parasite in the set. Uh, went over really well live. Um, has Gene Simmons on rhythm guitar. Um, love the track. Um, has kind of a kind of a doomy vibe to it, but still really enjoy it. Um, the riffs what's really kind of the doomy thing to it, but um, I mean it's quintessential classic Kiss. As with the next track, Getaway, which has all guitars, bass, and backing vocals, supposedly by Ace Frehley. And um, I think he he wrote this song, and uh, I think they actually I think wanted him to sing it, but um, he was not confident with his um, vocal abilities at the time. So um, Peter Chris sang it his only um, his only lead vocal spot on the album. Then we go to Rock Bottom, which um, I mean once again it says all guitars, bass, and backing vocals as well. Um, I mean, another, this is classic Kiss at its best, um, performed sporadically throughout the years, um, thrown around here and there on a reunion tour, I mean, in these early tours as well. Um, as with the next track, the second single from the album released on June 10th, 1975, Come On and Love Me. Um, the um, bass, bass, um, the bass line in the song is very funky. Um, I mean, Gene, to me, has always been a very underrated bass player. Um, very awesome bass player, in my opinion. One of the best. Um, first guitar solo is supposedly played by Paul Stanley. He does a great job there. And um, the next track, Anything for My Baby, um, starts out like another song on the album. Um but it has a similar feel, but at the same time, I mean, they're very different songs. Still love it. Um, a, kind of a deep track and an album track, but um, still love it. The next track, She. This dates back before Kiss was even started with Wicked Lester. In the, those sessions, this was recorded, um, oddly enough, with a flute in the um, song, which is very interesting um i actually really enjoyed those demos um or those sessions and uh, i wish they would actually officially release them now but um yeah she i mean awesome track the only thing that may be missing is the um breakdown that usually happens live but um they use that on um um the first album with let me know at the end of that song and i mean this in the on the tour was where they performed Ace Frehley. Well, Ace Frehley performed his guitar solo. The next track, another pre-Kiss song, Lover All I Can, which um, the original demo of this is very kind of psychedelic sounding. 
But nevertheless, I still love the demo of this as well. Um, great track. Another song that's, I mean, just classic Kiss. Um, quintessential Kiss, in my opinion. And um, it was performed, actually, live on the Rock the Nation tour. I think it was a... It, I think it stayed in the set a pretty good bit during that tour. But um, awesome song. Then we move to the... Um, Last track, um, also on Lover All I Can, some great drum, um, some great um, drums by Peter Chris, and then the tenth song on the album, the final song on the album, Rock and Roll All Night, um, their most well-known song. If you say Kiss, this is the one that everybody knows. Um, the live version is the one everybody knows the best. Um, it, the live version by far sur surpassed this version and um i mean that that was the single that brought kiss i think to the forefront of the music scene at the time awesome awesome track um always loved the track maybe a bit burnt out on it but i still love the song i mean they've tried and tried time and time again to make something very anthemic like this and i don't think they've ever hit the mark um they have came close with Shout It Out Loud, which they've tried to have as the closer here and there. Um, also, with God Gave Rock and Roll to You, too. Um, I think you've done it with Love Gun a few times, Detroit Rock City as well. But um, this has always been the song. I mean, this is the quintessential closer for the shows. But, um, I mean, this brings a close to the album. Um, I'll put those two Wicked Lester demos in the... Um, description below um deuce by neil bogart released march 18th 1975 their third lp um he hit the u.s billboard pop albums chart at 32 for 29 weeks on the chart uh, certified gold in the united states 500,000 copies on february 28th 1977 there's been a total of four releases more than that, counting the international stuff and some other reissues here and there. But um, the four major, I mean, of course, is the original vinyl in 75, um, the Mercury CD in 1987. I've actually never heard any of those original CDs. I've heard good and bad things about them. Um, I'd really love to pick up a few and listen to them and see if I can hear some of the um, mistakes that people's pointed out. I mean... Of course, on the patch, packaging, I've heard there was some pretty big um, grammat grammatical mistakes, or however you want to put it. And, I mean, of course, 10 years after that, in 1997, they remastered um, all of the Kiss discography up to Crazy Nights. And um, this was part of it, of course. And um, then you have the 180-gram vinyl version of that 2014. Um, awesome awesome um, collection of vinyl during that i mean they released i think all um the, i knew uh, they released every kiss album official kiss album on vinyl on 100, 180 gram vinyl but some weren't um included to just go out and buy some were um like a bunch of the compilations were on were in this big vinyl box set which is pretty cool looking um i've seen it before very cool looking, but um, also talk about the length of this album real quick. This is um, a very short album, kind of a straight to the point album. Um, I think it clocks in at like 29 minutes or maybe a little, a little above 30 minutes. Um, on the initial vinyl pressings, they um, would have these long gaps in between each track because of the short running time of the album um also to um kind of close things out the album cover the front cover features all of the all four members in business suits um the thing about it is only peter chris owned a suit the rest of the suits were owned by bill alcoin who loaned the other three members the suits um the cover photo was taken at southwest corner 23rd street 8th avenue and looking north in new york city um i mean 
one of their best album covers in my opinion um i mean you've got the four standing in new york with business suits on and you've got the kiss logo kind of kind of embossed around it and um you've got the infamous um missing s on this album um there's one s for the word kiss missing but um i mean dress to kill awesome kiss album to me classic kiss album um it flip-flops which one of the original three are my favorite um right now i probably have to say the original is my favorite sometimes it's hotter than hell i was initially going to say this was but then i changed it to hotter than hell then i said no i actually enjoy the kiss album that's my favorite but all three i mean are great um alive would put the band on the map and um 1975 this same year and they would stay on top of the world thereafter up until 79 and they would drop off and really until 1996 they wouldn't return to being on top of the world they had some success in the 80s but nowhere near as successful as this era of the band i mean if they look back if people look back on the on this band i mean th that's the era everyone looks at is 75 through 79 i mean but i mean awesome awesome album my pick of the year this week is um deep purples come taste the band their only album with tommy bolin on guitar um, the last to feature Glenn Hughes and David Coverdale on bass and vocals, respectively. Some great tracks, Coming Home, um, Drifter, Lady Luck, um, You Keep On Moving, Getting Tighter, This Time Around, Slash O to G, um, I Need Love, um, Diller, uh, probably repeating stuff, um, Love Child. It's an awesome track all the way around. Um Tommy Bolin replaced Richie Blackmore, who had left, I think, around the end of um, the Stormbringer tour, which I almost chose that, but that's not from 75. That's from 74. And um, the Stormbringer tour went on into 75, and uh, Richie Blackmore left because he wanted to pursue um, Richie Blackmore's Rainbow. And um, I'll talk about those albums one day, but... um. I mean, a great album. Um, eventually, it kind of folded the band up because um, the tour was kind of a train wreck from what I understand. Some shows were good. Some shows were just flat out bad. I don't think Tommy Bolin and Richie Blackmore's, the way he had recorded things really gelled one another. They were two totally different styles. R Tommy Bolin was more of a hard rock player and Richie Blackmore was more kind of a neoclassical player kind of where kind of how um john lord and richie blackmore really gel was because of their classical background but awesome album um hope you enjoyed this review like comment subscribe share these reviews i don't know when they'll be up <clears throat> um i'm trying to get a lot recorded to where i can just release them sporadically here and there when i feel like it maybe after i get things up and running really good maybe and i'll sit a time that I release these reviews. Um, I've got a few on private um, now. Well, I've got one on private. Well, two on private technically, but um, I have released my review for Ordinary Man, um, my review for Molly Hatchet's Devil's Canyon, and um, White Snake Slip of the Tongue, which I released um, at the time that I recorded this. Uh, that I'm recording this review. But, um, I mean, I like all sorts of music. Um, I'm going to eventually record some movie reviews, get those out to you. I mean, I have a large um, large range for music. Um, anything from the lightest of country to the hardest of rock, metal, um, southern rock, hard rock, blues, jazz, all kinds of stuff. Funk, um, R&B, soul all kind of stuff metal of course uh, movies i mean my biggest thing with movies is probably horror i mean that's kind of where my head is at right now is horror I, I mean of course i love a lot of different type of comedies and action movies but i mean horror is i'm a kind of a horror geek and um 
I've got a couple of reviews that I'm going to record. Um, one review in particular is a very weird movie, a very interesting movie. And, um, yeah, um, just to give another hint, um, it's the third part in a um, particular franchise, and it's different than all the rest of the movies. And um, I mean, very, it's a very, very interesting movie, and how it was even made is very interesting. But um, hope you enjoyed this. Um, like I said, like, comment, subscribe, share my reviews, get them out there. Tell me what you think I can do better with. I'm going to try to have some pictures or something to go up over um, my reviews to where you're not just looking at a black screen and listening to me talk. But um, like I said, my my plan is to release movie and album reviews. And not just that, I mean, um, make lists of like movies or music that kind of lost the plot. Weirdo albums by great bands, weirdo movies by great franchises, stuff like that. Um, kind of bad movies and bad and great franchises um bad albums and a great bands discography stuff like that um years in review stuff like that as well but um yeah um like comment subscribe share my reviews get them out there and um i don't know when this is going up but um whenever you hear it um tell me what you think about it um in the comments below I'm going to put up an Amazon link for both this and my pick of the year. I'm going to put some songs for you to kind of hear stuff from this album and my um, pick of the year as well in the description below. Um, also going to put the two, um, Wicked Lester songs down there as well for you to hear those. But I um, hope you enjoyed this review and whenever this is up, I um, hope you enjoy it. And... Um, yeah, um, see you next time.